Hi everyone. My name is Gary Mitchell and I just like to try to do this will be my first video on a tutorial on how to collimate a Ritchie Cretean telescope. They have a reputation of being notorious to be to collimate. But I will show you an easier a very easy method to use that involves both Cheshire eyepiece and lasers. And right down in front of me, right down here, are my tools. Howie Glider laser collimator, currently equipped with a single dot attachment. The Howie Glider concentric rings attachment for a final collimation of the primary mirror. Cheshire eyepiece. The Hotec I have right here is just there for reference to get the initial rough alignments. And a set of metric wrenches. And of course, the Richie Cretian telescope. And there's three sets of screws on the front right here that you have to adjust the secondary mirror. Do not, or in any circumstances, do not do anything with that screw right there in the middle, otherwise you'll throw everything off. So just worry about the three screws and only do one at a time. On the back end of the telescope by the focuser, are three sets similar to the front, but except they got grub screws and collimation screws. These right here, by this being an eight inch scope, it is linked, physically linked to the focuser. So anything you make to the focuser, the adjustments are also done to the primary mirror at the same time. Currently, I don't own a collimation plate that normally goes right here. So you can actually collimate the focuser separately from the primary. I don't currently have that accessory. And this right here is just my autofocuser. And there's a, when you do the initial collimation, there is a dot. Sorry about the focus, but as you can see, you can see the secondary dot down there in the secondary mirror. And as you can see, it's very flat compared to a an SCT because this is a this Richie Cretian uses two hyperbolic surfaces, both the primary and secondary mirror. Okay, there's the secondary dot, and as you can see, it is centered. And now we'll proceed with the alignment of the secondary mirror. To start the process for collimation, what you need to do is take your Cheshire, take your dust cap off. This is an Apertura branded uh, Cheshire. You can use any of them really. And that's if this one has crosshairs and the other. 45 degree mirror to reflect light down there and your peephole that you need to align with the secondary mirror. What I do is I insert the Cheshire into the focuser, look into it, adjust it so I can get always a good amount of light. Right there. When you lock it down, push it all the way in and take the lock screw. And I don't put any pressure on it, just enough to hold it in place but still be able to turn it. But can't barely move it out. Look in there and align my shadow from the Cheshire eyepiece with the mark on the secondary mirror, which I showed you earlier. So, with that being said, 
this is off right now. And there is a manufacturing flaw with this particular run of telescopes, and I'll show that to you with the Howie Glatter holographic attachment. And the defect is that the center mark on the, on the secondary mirror is actually off center. So you gotta be really careful about collimating with this particular one. But they are, what I've been told, they are in the process of getting that corrected. But I can't make any, I can't make any guarantees on that. But as far as I know, they are working on it. But if someone doesn't have any kind of collimation experience and they get this particular run of telescope, you're not, you're never gonna get it collimated. But I'm just doing this to show you it can be collimated without the secondary dot being in the exact center. But it's still an issue. And I will demonstrate. All right, since the, this right here, I'll take out the Cheshire and my adapter, which is basically just a two inch to one and a quarter. Set that to a side. And I'll take the Howie Glatter. Insert that in. Same thing, just do it right where it won't, can't turn anymore. Where it can turn, but you can't pull it out. That's all you need. It doesn't take much pressure to do it. Turn the laser on. But before I do that, sorry, there's something else I gotta do in the front of the scope. I have to remove the very front part of the baffle tube that's inside there. It's the only way you can see the secondary mirror because this scope is highly baffled. And I'm going to remove the baffle right now. Baffles out. Gotta be really careful because this scope is super light with that carbon fiber. Move it forward. And yes, this is the baffle right here that you remove. It's not it's just a small part, just the front part. Do not remove the entire baffle tube, otherwise it will throw it will cause the primary mirror to shift. Now that the baffle's on, out, taken out, turn your laser on. Okay, now I'm going to show you where it's supposed to hit at on the secondary mirror. And what it's doing right now is shooting, the laser's going down there hitting the secondary. But because the secondary mirror is, has the um, misaligned center dot, Right now, it currently doesn't matter about that during the initial part of this. Once we get roughed in, the third part that I'll show you, that's where you make the, um, the compensation for the um, offset. Okay, there you'll see the laser is hitting the exact center of the secondary mirror. But like I said, because of the issue with the offset, you can, um, this doesn't matter right now, but right now it's roughed, column meter right now, for the focuser anyway. But the other part I need to do is get this mirror to bounce back towards the primary. And once that happens, 
and then it would be what they called a rough collimated. the laser off and remove it. Set that to the side just for the time being. I'll take my second, my Cheshire now. Same thing from earlier. Push it in. Just tighten it down just enough for it to where it can't pull out. Like that but still turn. Just turn that just enough to... Just enough to do that right there. Now I got some light hitting that mirror shine on the secondary. Now, since I got my eye covering that hole right there, it's creating a shadow that's on the secondary. But it's really difficult to actually see that inside here. So what I'm gonna do right now is just make sure everything's lined up and it's ever so slightly off. So what I'll do is here, as I'll take this, uh, sorry about that. Sorry about that, it's just that I'm having some allergies right now. And I'll take this screw out this particular key, put it in one of the whole screws up here, but like I said, do not touch that center screw, otherwise um, it will cause a, cause a distance between the primary and the secondary to shift. And the hyperbolic surfaces on the rigid creatines are so sensitive to movement that that's one of the reasons why they're so hard to collimate. And second, that distance, if you're off, you would, it throws the focus all off. So, with that being said, it's pretty close right now. And what I'm gonna do right now is put my hand right here just enough to feel that because this tube is kind of long. Just ever so slightly. Okay. I got it over. All I have to do right now is just bring it down. So, the top screw now. All I gotta do is just bring it, turn it up, which will bring it down. The wrong way. Oh. Okay. One more time, and that should put it in the center of that donut. Now, right now, the scope is considered rough collimated right now. Right now, the second primary and secondary are now aligned with each other. But now the part right here, where I need the third part, where, the, where I have to swap out the Howick Ladder's um, holographic attachment, is that these, sorry, that particular type of uh, center spot on that secondary is off center. So the Halleck ladder right now, once I, once I project the rings, and I'll show you here in a few minutes, once you do that right there, you come back here and make these adjustments to compensate, and that will put the primary mirror on the exact optical center of the secondary. And I will do that right now. 
Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I had to get some uh, additional equipment here. I had to get a light so I can see, make it easier to see in the back of the telescope here. But as you can see, when I was explaining, is that you can see the concentric rings that's in front of you right now. One of them is broken, the inner ring. Right now, all we're concerned with is that inner ring. So that means I gotta adjust the primary to make that ring visible. Or even in this case, hide it because it's actually one of the shoulder rings. So, here we go. Allen keys in. So here we go. Bringing it up now. Keep bringing it. Keep it up. another slight adjustment on this particular one right here. There we go. Okay. Now, as you can see, the scope can be considered collimated right now. And what I gotta do tonight, or whenever I have a chance again, is take it outside to do a star test, because a star test is the golden standard. But yeah, there is still some uh, issues with the, um, you can still see some residual rings in the center. So I'm going to make some adjustments here. But that should be okay. There we go. I just pulled the focuser back and about to, as you can see, that is collimated. Except I'm going to make some just very minor quick change right here. broken ring. There. Now everything's centered. Now the scope is considered collimated. Okay. 